Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 23 and today we start our brand new season of our Moto3 career mode. We're on the 658 Squadra Corsa Honda and this is Portimao. It's time for round one. Ladies and gentlemen, Portimao. So here we are then guys in fourth position. Just got knocked off of the front row at the end of qualifying two but away we go. It's a long light that one actually. It took me a while. I thought we'd be ready to go but here we go. Down to the prime era corner. The challenge is to beat Tatsuki Suzuki. We had a good exchange on the social media. Nothing uh, particularly egregious or aggressive. It was just two riders being polite. And of course, he is our challenger. In my Honda season, the goal is to beat the Honda riders and start getting notice from Honda. Hopefully, they start uh, in listening to our opinion regarding the bike development and future upgrades. But now, coming into a bit of contact with Tatsuki Suzuki and then into Jama Masia, getting into a bit of a Honda roller coaster there, getting bashed to side to side and like a pinball machine almost, <laughs> getting bounced around into the fourth corner. But coming out of the VIP as an ice cream van passes my window, so apologies if you hear that in the background. It is summer, of course, here in the UK. Now into the right hand side. Look at uh, Daniel Holgado. Where are you going? Someone get him a layout of the track and hopefully he'll stay on it. But coming out of Samsung Corner, this is a great opportunity to remind you to subscribe, guys. Of course, if you're enjoying the content, it does help out the channel. And of course, it helps keep you inundated with a lot of MotoGP 23 content. So definitely click it if you get the chance. But now into turn 11. And speaking of 11, we've got 11 laps here at Portimao. This was a request seen in the previous videos about having a longer career mode. So we're going to do 11 lap races and hoping to sustain that. But if you want to see less laps, just let me know in the comments section down below. Let me know what you prefer, as a matter of fact. Comment long laps or short laps and let me know which, which you prefer. Maybe I'll do a poll in the coming days or maybe even today at some point. But into the final corner here for the Galp. Difficult corners to get right, of course, as we've seen in the MotoGP Academy. As we now bring on the power, very tight to the apex there, just a small bump. We are in a good spot. Might have dropped the power down to power setting two a little bit too early here. Maybe back into three. Could get us in that battle at the front, but I've got to say, this is on 120% difficulty AI. I don't think you were expecting to hear that, were you? <laughs> For some reason, AI and Portimao seem to be pretty good and pretty fair. So I would say... This is, we're in a good chance for a victory here today. Power setting three, power setting two. We'll manage it as we go. But 11 long laps here in Portimao. It could be on the cards for us to do really well here. Now, I don't know how well the AI tend to improve towards the latter stages. They don't seem to do it as much as they did in MotoGP 22 as we dive up the inside of, um, of uh, Daniel Algardo. I wasn't expecting Algardo to break so early there. Is that a weakness to the 120% difficulty AI here in Portimao? morera has gone wide. Is he going to stay on the track? He is just barely. But we now enter the Samsung corner with confidence and glee. Because Marrera is... He's had another massive moment coming out of turn 8. Another wheelie! He is not... Well, now where is he going? <laughs> where are you going, AI? Stay within range. Stay within the distance. But that has just gifted us... A two-tenths of a second advantage. Oh, it's now up to five-tenths of a second. We're going to try and manage this and see what happens. We're into the left-hand side for turn 13. A corner feel really good in. Almost as good as what Pedro Acosta feels good in that corner. But now into turn 14. Keeping it nice and tight as we bring on the power. And this, for the very first time, has extended our, our lead up to a second. A whole second ahead of Marrera behind. And I'm guessing Holgado is there as well. And we're only in power setting two. Now I did go for the recommended tyre outputs today. Medium front and then the soft rear was the selection. And I feel really good with it. As I say, this difficulty has been on 120% all weekend. Dominated first, first practice. Dominated the second. And was pretty competitive in the qualifying two. Until the end of the session. When it all looked done and dusted. And it looked like I had third place. I ended the session and bang, Ortola took third. So I'm not happy with losing the front row, but it is what it is. But as long as we take the victory, that's all that matters. Now don't forget, our last race here at Moto3 was to end our Vision Track debut season, which we actually got the win due to the calls of a red flag, which ended the race. Could we be winning for the very first time a legitimate race with a full, well, 50% distance? This could be on. 
1.4 is the gap. I've got to be honest with you, I was not expecting the 120% difficulty in this track to be so easy. We've, I wouldn't say we've been complaining, but we've certainly been questioning the difficulty in the other tracks. They seem to be extremely difficult, even on the lower difficulties like 90% or even 85. But here, the 120? There's certainly not a balance here in MotoGP 23, but current as it stands, Suzuki is down there in fifth place, our uh, Honda rival. And sadly, no sign of my teammate Ricardo Rossi, who still, for some reason, if you watched my videos previously, you'll notice that Ricardo Rossi was wearing a Lorenzo helmet. Typically is one from 2010, which gives me great, great confidence to believe that those rides and uh, those riders and tri bikes are going to be in the game at some point. Because if the helmet's already in the game, surely the rider is going to be as well. So maybe it was a teaser done by the devs, but for Ricardo Rossi for some reason. <laughs> So across the line, I don't really like the line positioning here in MotoGP because you cannot see it. Here is the line, but the line actually starts five seconds be behind us, but you can't actually see where that line is. I was winning an online race a few days ago by about a minute in the wet conditions here in Portimao, and I wanted to wait at the line so my friends could catch up, but I didn't know where the line was, so I just had to hit it and just wait. <laughs> I could see where the, um, the, uh, the marshal was waving the flag, but it wasn't quite clear on the track. So still sticking with power setting 2 for the majority of this race, I might change it over to 3 later on and we'll see if we can improve the lap times, but this, unfortunately, is just going to be a quite a dominant race, isn't it? This is a classic Ethan Guevara, a Joan Mir, a Danny Kent, or a maybe a Lorenzo Dalla Porta sometimes. We don't really see many races like this in Moto3 anymore, but... It happened a lot last year with Ethan Guevara, which basically ruined it for me. <laughs> I'm never a fan of those getaway victories like this. But uh, yeah, this is interesting. I cannot believe this is the hardest difficulty. So if you're watching this and you're excited for your tr career mode, bump up the difficulty for this track as we make our first mistake of the race for turn 11. That costs us about a second. Maybe a bit more actually, about 1.5 seconds. So not ideal. But something to take knowledge of there as we were actually improving the lap time. So 58, uh, 158 and then a 151. The gap is down to about 3.7 seconds. Now, I do apologise if I'm not making this particularly interesting or exciting for you, but there's nothing I could do. I think even if I went into power setting 1, I think this still would be far and miles behind. So I guess in today's video, let's see how much we can win by. Let's just keep on pushing. Let's go for the 10 seconds. Let's go for the 11. 10 seconds seems about reasonable. So let's stick to 10 seconds for now. And if we make it to 10 seconds... And we'll see where we go from there. But I'm really unhappy with those three laps. That's very inconsistent pace. Not good. Not good at all. So into turn two. And then firm on the brakes. Breaking well before we see that line to the left hand side of the circuit there into Lagos. Is the, uh, is the graphic in the top right corner of the screen about to go green? We're close. Anything less than a tenth and I'm a pretty happy man. So keep on pushing as we go into the Tour VIP for the second, uh, excuse me, fifth time of asking in today's video. Now, of course, guys, if you're looking forward to seeing more of the other content, such as Live GP or MotoGP Academy, or just guides in general, then rejoice. I've got plenty of those videos coming out this week for the Live GP race yesterday, and then we have the uh, MotoGP Academy tomorrow, I believe, and maybe even a breaking guide towards the latter stage of the week. So, yeah, stay tuned. For a lot more dot race because there's a lot more content coming your way everything to help you on motor gp23 i'm even going to look into the future of potentially signing up our own league maybe one for moto 3 maybe one for moto 2 maybe one for moto gp who knows what's going to happen in the near future but what i can assure you is we're definitely going to be doing some sort of league at some point so yeah stay tuned to that if you're interested because i'd like to get you guys involved i'd like to get a bit of a race going online so definitely stay tuned for more information so, for now, we're what? Six, seven laps removed from winning this race. Now, I can assure you, the Argentina round for the next one, spoiler alert, is extremely intense. So, we're going to take what we can here, learn what we can, enjoy this experience, and take it to Argentina, because the race in Argentina, I had to lower the difficulty to make it competitive, and it was... Incredible. Absolutely thrilling. 
If I put every race on 120% difficulty, a lot of them I'm going to finish dead last by about two or three seconds. The AI are superior in many of the circuits. Just very difficult. It seems to me that since Superbike 22 came out with the AI in that game, it seems to have carried over to MotoGP. And the way I want to explain that is because in Superbike 22, the AI was exceptionally strong in a few tracks. Most in particular, they were very strong on the hardest difficulty. Um, Aragon, I think, yeah, I think in one of my videos, my first video, Alvaro Bautista was like three seconds faster than my fastest rider in the Ace Academy. <laughs> I mean, unbelievable. So I think the AI has got that same problem here in MotoGP 23, where that some tracks are just going to be unbeatable, and then some, you're going to have a good race. But of course, here in Portimao, if they weren't making those consistent mistakes, so they weren't wheeling out of the Samsung corner, they weren't going wide for the Craig Jones corner, or even going too deep into turn 7 like we've seen Halgado and Marrera do earlier on. Maybe then we'd have a very compelling and challenging race on our hands, but we're up to 7.5 seconds now. This could potentially be an 8 second advantage. By the time we cross the timing line, it is already an 8 second advantage. Turn 14 is 8 seconds. <laughs> wow. We are killing it, metaphorically and somewhat forically. <laughs> we're, we're absolutely annihilating the competition here, and I can't believe it. And I do apologise if this race hasn't been as interesting as you expected. I'm trying my best <laughs> to keep you entertained. But I will be honest, my concentration started to dip through this one, and I really regretted the, the choice of doing 11 laps. I wish I'd lowered it down. I really did. Because this is just a long, long journey. I enjoyed it because this is going to be some great experience for me to learn, to get better at the game, etc, etc. But a long 11 race lap, it, it's tiring. It is a little bit tiring. Of course, the more more pressure on the tyres to learn a bit more about the bike, it is beneficial though. So, got to take the pros with the cons. But unfortunately, it wasn't the most intriguing of races, let's be honest. Well, coming into the left-hand side here and into the right, we're not going to follow suit and do what Marrera or Holgado did. We're going to stay within the lines and get across to the right-hand side of the screen. Now, recently I've heard people mentioning that there is stutter issues in MotoGP 23. Now, regarding my PC and the way everything's running for my game, absolutely fine. There's no issue whatsoever. If you do notice any sort of slowing down or stuttering within this video, it is down to my recording software. I changed the FPS on it recently, and I think it messed it up. I changed the bitrate as well, and it, the quality looks better, but I do notice some slowdown. If you have a look at the TT Isle of Man 3 videos I did, it also has a slowdown as well. So I hope it's not off-putting, and I hope it's not too jarring, but if it is, let me know, and I'll, I'll go back to the drawing board and see what I can figure out. But so far, I'd say the quality looks good, and that's the majority of the time all that really matters, but... Into the right-hand side then for turn 15. Very strong as we now bring on the acceleration. You see the right-hand side of the soft rear getting quite warm at this stage. Something to pay attention to for the final couple of laps. We do cross the timing line for lap 8 out of 11. So we've got another 4 laps to tackle here. Into the braking marker for prime era corner for turn 1. Of course, if you want to learn more about this circuit and learn more about the MotoGP class, I have done the MotoGP Academy video just a few days ago. I'll show you how to get gold on all of those. So now into Lagos, and coming out of Lagos for turn 4, we have a look at our top 8, Marrera, Holgado. They finished on a dead heat in my championship in the debut season with the Vision Track Honda, and I think they gave the edge to Marrera, so effectively, Diogo Marrera is our Moto3 world champion, and he's our current contender to be going back to back. However, we're looking quite promising here in the first round, and if we actually win this one, we'll be in a very elusive class of riders to take the last victory of the previous season and the first victory of the next season on different bikes. Granted they're the same bike, but different teams, I'd say. Maybe if I swapped over to a KTM, it'd be a bit more pre impressive, but still, we were lucky taking the victory in Valencia after the uh, rain flag came out. But right now, there's nothing lucky about this. There's nothing about fortune in this race here in Portimao. We are 10 seconds ahead of the competition. Yes, 10 whole seconds. We are doing a stellar job here 
in the 658 Squadra Corsa Honda. Paolo Simoncelli will be chuffed. He'll be doing the podcast after this one with massive praise for his young rider. Well, I say young, I'm 28. <laughs> it's not exactly young, really, is it? So <laughs> into the right-hand side for 15. We will bring on the power and making sure to avoid the rumble strip, of course. Do not want to get caught on there. Across the line, this sets us up for lap 9 of 11 here in the Algarve. And a quick recap of the top 8. We have ourselves in the lead by 10 seconds from Diogo Marrera, Daniel Helgado, Ivan Otola, Tatsuki Suzuki, Xavi Artigas and uh, Ayumi Sasaki with Jama Masia down there in 8th spot. Now, as far as... Ooh, Wheelie coming out of Largos. That's never ideal. That's something I do quite appreciate with the Moto3 bikes. You can give them a bit of a wheelie if you're strong enough on the power. And right on cue, that was us going a bit too eager on the acceleration. But yeah, just a look at that top eight at the moment. Suzuki and Masia. Those are the two riders we really want to focus on beating. If we can impress Honda, as I mentioned earlier, we can get upgrades for our package for the next break i think it's after the summer break the package is actually come into effect so we could be having a very very strong honda in this championship the number 47 of course made recently by sergio 23 and the brand new helmet you may have seen the post i have on the channel big thank you to the belgian ace for uh, working his magic yet again of course riding with the italian team it's good to be representing uh, the paolo simoncelli team for Marco Simoncelli, of course, number 58. So into the left-hand side for turn 13. We will be starting the penultimate lap after this one. And of course, guys, let me know again. If you're still here watching at this point, let me know if you're enjoying the longer laps. I don't mind doing the longer races, but just let me know so I know what to do. Into the right-hand side for the gulp. This was the final corner. And I've got to be honest with you, I'm feeling... Stronger and stronger into that corner. The biggest thing that everyone is obviously getting used to at this moment, and I've put in around 30 hours of MotoGP 23 already, I'm really getting the understanding and the hang of this acceleration, the gyroscopic movement of when the bike lifts up as you accelerate. And the key here is just don't be so aggressive on the acceleration. So if you're coming out of a corner and you feel the bike going straight, just reduce the throttle ever so slightly. I found it's really working for me, and I found it's working for the guides I'm doing as well. Just gentle, and it, it suits me down to the ground. I love the gentleness of this control of the bike and how it feels. It's really good. I, I'm having a whale of a time in MotoGP 23, and I hope you guys are too. Or if not, as long as you're enjoying the videos, that's all that matters. But we have gone deep for the Tour VIP, so unfortunately we will not be bettering our lap time. We had a good run of laps there. A 152.3, 152.1, oh, unfortunately we did have the 152.2. I would have liked to have been a bit more consistent here in Portimao. But really, did it matter? We could go for three more long lap penalties yet, and we'd still win this race. A dominant showing here today. What a way to stamp your authority in the roller coaster. What a way to come to the, quite possibly the toughest track in MotoGP, and dominate by 11 seconds. Granted that AI just weren't up to par today, but I feel good. I can't wait for the next race here in Portimao. I didn't really care for it in previous MotoGP games, but there's something special about MotoGP 23's handling and this track. It just works together in tandem, like Doctor and Ace. Name a better combination than that. I'll wait. <laughs> We've got a few more corners to go. Well, one more corner, and that is the penultimate lap. And unfortunately, I, uh, I miscalculated here, I got into my own little mind and I wanted to try and get a wheelie across the line. Not like it's the final lap, but I wanted to prepare the wheelie so I could do it for the next lap. <laughs> Unfortunately, it wasn't. I couldn't do it. So maybe on the next lap I might downshift a bit more and then push. But for some reason I couldn't wheelie when I wanted to. I was wheeling out of Largos, but I guess I was in a low gear for that. So I'm hoping I can do one better when we get across the line. I guess from this side, of the, it kind of looks like the Alex Marquez or... Uh, no, Alex Rin, should I say, or Alicia Spargo going across the line too early and celebrating. I just know I'm, up, I'm ahead by 11 seconds, so I mean, nothing matters really here. I could do what Lorenzo did in uh, Mugello. Wave to the Ducati fans as he was uh, passing when he was going to take his first victory on board the Bologna Bullet. That's a, uh, that's a thing I'd like to see in MotoGP 23. A Lorenzo historic mode. You know, like we had the Rossi 2009. Chuck in a Lorenzo one as well. That'd be good to see. 
And I would really like to see Lorenzo on the Ducati. Get me one of them in the game and I'll be pretty happy. At this point we need some, well, any historical riders because I would like to have some here in MotoGP 23. But coming into the Craig Jones corner, we are less than a couple of laps remaining, uh, excuse me, a couple of corners remaining to conclude the race here in the Algarve. We've had some fun, fun battles to start it off, but it's been pretty much smooth sailing from there on out. A good performance, a dominant performance, an ace performance for us all. There's me wheelie. <laughs> I was able to get a wheelie up for the end. A bit of celebrations for the fans. Because I appreciate Are they doing a Mexican wave or is that texture popping? It kind of looks like they're doing a Mexican wave. I'm going to take that away from it. <laughs> a bit of texture popping to the left. It's a Mexican wave for the number 47 because we are victorious and we will take the championship lead for the very first time here in Moto3. I forgot to downshift so there's no wheelie. Can we get a stoppy? We can't even do that either. <laughs> Not like it matters because we are victorious here in Portimao. So Marrera finishing second from Holgado and the rest is history. 11 seconds from Marrera who is the championship protagonist. Changed now to ours in the road to MotoGP. So of course not too difficult to work out the championship standings, exactly the same position as we finished this race, but the important part is the team's championship which I do believe we're leading by a couple of points. But guys, that's it from me, thank you very much for watching the video, I do hope you enjoyed. Let me know once again if you prefer the longer races or if you prefer the short ones, need to know soon as if you can. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, consider joining the Dr. Ace Pit Crew if you want to be part of the team and if you want to use custom emojis for the comments and chat down below. But yeah, that's it from me guys, thanks for watching, ciao for now. Oh hi, didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.